Hello guys, Savix here. Today we're going to be going over 5 things that will help you improve your arena gameplay. Now if you're familiar with my channel, you guys probably know most of these because I always go over them. So just a heads up. Alright first, let's go over targeting. Now this may seem unnecessary for some of you guys, but this is actually very important. Either if you're a healer or a DPS, I highly recommend binding your keys to target enemy or party members. And if you'd like, you can also bind focus targeting. This will allow you to save extra time and your awareness. It may seem very small, but when you're clicking your targets from where they are or from your arena frames, it already takes time for your mouse to move and your eye goes off track for a few seconds. It just doesn't flow well. I know some people are very stubborn and don't like to change, saying I'm fine with clicking and I'm fast with them, but you're lying to yourself. Once you give this a try and you get comfortable with this, I guarantee you, you will be amazed of how much this will help. It was the same for me as well. I knew about targeting, but I was lazy to change, plus I had other keybinds in my key and I had to rebind, rememorize. And it seems like a lot of work and I didn't want to do it. But if you want to improve, you gotta be willing to change and adapt. So I changed it. And I reviewed a lot of videos you guys sent me. And I always tell you to change, but you guys don't change. So please take time and make these changes. It will help a lot. For me, these are my keybinds. I use the side of my mouse going down. Arena target 1, 2, 3. If I hold shift, it becomes focus target 1, 2, 3. If I press alt, it becomes friendly targets. Now if you don't have a mouse like this, you can also use shift 1, 2, 3, control 1, 2, 3, or alt 1, 2, 3, or even f 1, 2, 3. So there's a lot of options, you don't always have to have a mouse. Macros are my best friend. So here, we're going to cover arena macros, and party macros. Now this goes for every class, so don't think this is just for reds. I'm on the red because it has both supportive and offensive spell. It's just a perfect example. All right, let's go over arena one to three macro first. Why this is so important. This game is all about reaction time. <laughs> Let's say you're playing an arena, you're fighting MLS, which is Mage Lock Shaman. You guys are on the Mage and the Shaman's free cast. And time to time, you want to kick him or chain CC him. Let's say he's casting a Hex to your healer and you gotta stop him. If you were to do it normally without macro, you would have to swap target, then press kick, then swap back to your original target. And that takes time. So to be quicker, you make arena 1 to 3 interrupt or CC macro. And by having this, you can also stay in your target, just press one button and CC the other, without having to swap around. And the targeting is always like this, one, two, three. It goes down the row, one, two, three. And some might say, Savix, what if I have focus macro? Focus macro is great, that's what I started with too, but you can only play around with two people, which is your target and your focus. The third target, if you play threes, you have no control of. Here's another example of why this is necessary. In this match, I know the druid will come out and open with a clone, so I instantly click this one button and it stuns him. Now if you're a range class, you can just kick those. Same macro, slash cast target equal arena 1, and you put whatever your spell name is. You could just simply shift click from your spell book and the name will just go in there right away. Either it's Counterspell, Mind Freeze, Pummel, Rebuke. You can just change the ending and it'll work for everything. Okay, so let's go over the supportive spell now. If you're playing a healer, it's nice to have Party 1-2 macro ready. Just for your main defensive spell, like Iron Bark, Pain Suppression, Sack, Cocoon, etc. So what I basically want you to do is have big cooldowns and a cleanse in your macro. For me, when I play my Paladin, I have Blessing of Sanctuary and Bob ready to go, which is basically a defensive 
and a cleanse. So whenever my healer gets in a CC, I instantly press my button to cleanse him, or if he's getting bursted on, I would just bop him right away. So I want you to do the same, put your cleanse and a big macro in there. If you want more, you're more than welcome to make more, but that's totally up to you. Alright, next up we have add-ons. Add-ons are super useful, especially if you're new to this game or just started learning. The first add-on I'm going to share is Big Debuff. It shows your CC duration in the middle of your screen, plus it also shows on your portrait or your enemy portrait. Next is Omnibar. If you play a caster, I really really recommend having this so you can see enemy kicks. Whenever they kick, it shows you the cooldown in the screen. You could also set it up to see other spells too, but people mainly use it to just see kicks. Next is Gladius. This is... you probably already have this. <laughs> it shows a nice box of enemy frames. Also, it shows DR of CC. That's what I have it mainly for, just to track DRs. And the last add-on is Gladius Eloessa. If you're really new to PvP and you have bad awareness, it's actually nice to have this because this add-on calls out everything for you. Also, you can set this up to shout out anything you want, like big cooldowns, big heals, big defensive, anything you want. So you have good awareness and know what the enemy is doing. Alright, so let's move on. Now you guys are prepared, you've mastered your class, you know how to target, use macro and add-ons. But there's still one more thing, which will be our number 4, knowing your enemy. A lot of you guys send me videos to review and I've seen all of them. And most of the mistakes I kinda covered, which was targeting and kicking, some macros to make life easier. And some of the things that I noticed was a lot of you guys seemed like you don't know your enemy class. Meaning, their defensives and offensive spell. For example, Resto Druid pops Iron Bark and Bark Skin and people are still trying to train them. Like, you shouldn't be doing those things. Or when a Mage tempts, you're playing a class with the Dispel but you're not dispelling. Same with Shadow Priest Bomb. Healers can cleanse this but they don't cleanse this and it explodes and stuns all your party members. Like small things like that, you have to know. Of course if you're beginning, you won't know, but as you slowly play, you will develop and know. Some people, they're aware of this. They just don't care. <laughs> they just play, they don't even <laughs> want to learn the enemy and they're like, what the heck, how did he do that? I think the easiest way to learn is look at the spells, either through an add-on or, when you're playing a battleground or skirmishes, just take your mouse and look at their buffs. So if you're playing a game and you see an icon that you don't know, I want you to put your mouse over it and read the name. Memorize it and you could look it up later. Or if you want and you have time, you could just read it at that spot. But it's probably best not to because they will beat you up. <laughs> Unless you're in a battleground and skirmish and you don't care. Just check what those icons are if you don't know what it is. I think the add-on nameplate cooldown has an option where you could look at every single spell and maybe just take a glance at them, know what's what, and that will help you a lot too. Because if you don't know how to fight your enemy, how else would you win, you know? Like you gotta know when to get off targets, hop back on, etc. Alrighty, now we are at number 5, last one, finding the right people to play with. I think this is one of the hardest ones because all the above you can control and learn, but finding partners is not something you can control. It's also harder if you don't have experience or achievement. But trust me, if you master all the things I talked about up there, people will love you. They will invite you back and they would want to play with you because you're good. I think the best way to find people is LFG sadly. LFG isn't the best experience, but that's the only thing we have right now. So my tip is play with people around your CR. If you could get into a good group like higher CR than you, that's really great, but that's low chances. Say you start at 1500, look for a team that has 1500. Work your way up, get to 1800, 
If you like the team, you can stay with them. If you think you're stuck there, just tell them GG's, go to LFG again, look for groups that have 1800 CR, etc. Keep doing that and you'll push up and up. There is no special trick. If you got no achievements or CR, you gotta put in work, start from the bottom to top. And along the way, just filter out your teams if they're holding you back, or if they're willing to learn and you like them, keep practicing with them and push with them. Like synergy is what you're looking for. If you guys are stuck at a certain rating, surely something is wrong. Either you gotta step up and make improvements, or your teammates gotta make improvements. And like I said before, you gotta be willing to make changes. Also play the right comp and know the strats and you're good to go.